Oops, I hit the wrong thing. And we should be good to go. So yeah, that all.
Perfect. Give me one second to switch it. Yeah, I was just going to say, I found Brian and they're all good. But Yeah, I am trying to get... Why is it not grabbing? There it goes. Go. Clinton's on the hook. Yeah, if it's flashing, it's muted. Okay, and we're live. We are witnessing Clinton versus Elkhorn in the semifinals. Sure. Keep talking. Yeah. Okay. We're seeing a Cthulhu Dodgy Poseidon band coming out of Clinton, a Bologna Agni Cleo band. The Cleo band's obviously targeting out Fable One, the two time MVP. See Fable and Locking at Thanatos. It's one of his main characters here. They banned the Cleo away from him, which has been a staple pick for the season so far, but he's afraid on the Thanatos and helps play towards their playstyle of walking to the enemies and snowballing here. And then, honestly, the Amuzenkov, kind of a suspicious pick, especially with Thanatos and the early game pressure. The, the dual lane, they're going to have pressure early, but that's basically a free gank on an AMC. So the key here is the AMC might be going mid here. AMC mid's been pretty uh, popular now around these times with his new uh, buffs to his ultimate here, helping kill the tanks. I don't know if maybe going mid is bad going into the Thanatos where you can just ult on him and kill him pretty easily. But at the same time, if, if he's mid, the survivability is way better than duo. You see Did Clinton here picking the soul. Maybe going for the double ADC comp here with the soul going mid, maybe ADC. Pretty fucksable here too. Honestly, would you like to see a Fafnir in this sport for Clinton? Maybe Fafnir's pretty good into all those characters on uh, Elk's team. Maybe it helps with the uh, soul burst and stuff, Osiris. With a lot of all attackers here, the Fafnir might be the pick. And then Elk has taken a long, long time to pick this. You see uh, Clinton banned out the Poseidon, Daji, Cthulhu. They see that they've been banning those in pretty much all their games so far. I don't know what that is. Maybe they're having difficulties with their comps that they're running into that. The big ults maybe help fight off their uh, invades. Still waiting for the pick here, though. Hovering the Horus here. Interesting. Is that going to be Horus Jungle with Hydras? Maybe. Another flex pick here. A lot of flexible picks on each team. Horus can support mainly, but also jungle and solo has been pretty popular now with the solo. But with the Alice there, it's probably going jungle solo. I mean, personally, I like the jungle. I think the cheese is epic with the the two into Hydras or one into Hydras. So. See, the Fenner banned them from uh, Clinton's side and Elkhorn, they banned the Ganesh and Sobek. Targeting out their support player here. I feel like, though, if they ban the Fenner, they're, they're going to look to pick Thoth, honestly, in this situation. Maybe the Clinton support's looking for an Ares here, maybe. Pretty good into Horus Isla, stops their mobility, and you can just pull bees on AMC without the CC immunity on AMC. No CC immunity there. Easily pull the bees with his ult. And then picking the Jingwei, you're going to play super safe. So it is AMC mid. The Kuzma's locked in here, boys. I mean, I was joking about before that they're going to lock Kuzma. And the Artemis here to finish off the picks from Clinton. Looking for the big team fight ults. Helps pull beads to Kuzumbo. He's kind of a weird character here. He can flex solo, but he's look like he's going support here. And the thing is, Kuzumbo is actually back from retirement. He was removed from the game because Nene would just go invisible. So, interesting pick. See, the Artemis and Jingwei, both pretty late game hunters. Both hunters that go pretty well with the crit right now, which is pretty meta right now. Just waiting on the last pick from Elkhorn here. Probably looking for their jungler, maybe solo, depending on where the horse goes here. We're going to take the time with this one. Got to make sure they get the perfect god. In this situation, who would you pick for uh, a solo laner? For a solo laner here, going to a lot of AAs. They banned the balloon out. Maybe Ardio's still up. Ardio's pretty good in Kuzumbo. You can help Ardio in Kuzumbo just uh, burns them. Yeah, but I, I feel like in that situation, the cripple isn't even that they good. They the Hun bats here, so it's go it is going to be the Horus Solo maybe, or the Atlas, depending on where it goes. Doing a lot of trades. See the Hun bats? They're looking for pick comp here with the uh, Horus Atlas Hun bats ult. Pretty good at playing corners and picking gods off. CC, a lot of them have CC, pulling beads. Doing a lot of uh, a lot of fighting in the jungle, maybe from the Elkhorn side here. Is we're loading to the game. I mean, a lot of Clinton's team 
They don't have a lot of escapes. Lantos, no dash, no jump. Osiris has to use his ult to get away. Soul has the three to get away. It's still not a dash or a jump. Artemis, Artemis is going to be clean picking. So that's if if I'm Elkarn, I'm going after Artemis. I'm burning her beads, I'm burning your ult. If Atlas grabs Artemis, just Artemis is dead. That's a fact. Yeah, Horus is a really good pick here into their comp. We have double ADCs with the Thanatos, with the pen on his two. Helps burn down objectives early game. Probably looking for objective play early. Maybe going for towers at the soul here. There's a lot of flexibility in the Squin size comp. And, I mean, anytime you're going double ADC, it's, you're going to shut objectives. So you're going to see towers going down early. You're going to see gold furies going down early. You're going to see pyro. And you're going to see fire giant coming down early on both teams. So... Yeah, we see the soul going mid here with that bolt ten on the soul. Fable one is a pretty good Thanatos player. He plays it a lot here. With Thol Soul Thanatos here, they're gonna have a lot of snowball mid. Probably look for early kills. It helps the helps them do their strats of walking at enemies and just fighting. They're really good at grouping and team fighting early game, getting their leads. So maybe the Thanatos and Soul are gonna help f facilitate that here. And I mean, the one thing here. Uh, Elkhorn cannot do is they cannot tower sit. If you tower sit, Clint is just going to run away. They're going to steal your blue, their green, your red, your speed buff, your back XPs, and they might only have one or two kills, but they're going to be 6, 10k gold up. Yeah, we saw them in the last game with uh, Clint versus Port there. Port uh, trying to play to the strat of uh, sitting under their towers or playing more passive to not try to get, give them the lead and kills, but it ended up falling behind on gold with all the invades and stuff. They just got swept coming into late game team fights. They're down too much, so not looking to do that from Elkhorn's side. Want to look getting active, play corners in the jungle, and pick off these immobile uh, gods like Thanatos and Artemis here. And a lot of that's coming down to wards. Honestly, whatever team wards more, it's it's gonna make a world of difference with the immobility on both teams. Looking at the uh, duo lane here, we got the Artemis Jingwei. Interesting matchup. Both have CC main alts. Artemis probably has the edge early game. Jingwei, when she comes along with the crit meta here, she's gonna be doing a lot of damage. But the Kuzmo can help mitigate that by sticking on her and with the reflect on his two. And right now we're just waiting on the spectator delay. There's a, I think it's a two minute spectator delay. So as soon as that's over, we'll be loaded right in the game. Okay. Here we go. Yes, give me a second here. As soon as it finishes loading. Okay. And everybody is loaded in and they're starting to buy their items. And we're, and like my co commentator said, uh, both ADCs are going Golden Arrow into crit. So nothing new there. And the Kuzmo, it, uh, a lot of supports, they'll start, they'll actually go into Gauntlet of Thieves, and you see that on the Atlas from Romus the King. However, Kuzmo's, it looks like he's going into Sovereignty, and Sovereignty, it doesn't give. The same amount of stats late game, once you, like, Thebes will give you way more once it's fully stacked. But the problem is you have to stack that. You have to sit in mid, clear, clear waves with your mid, your carry, or anybody else. Where Kuzumbo, he's going to build a Sovereign, he's just going to run at you. He doesn't have to worry about getting those stacks, so. We might see an Emperor's Armor out here from the Kuzumbo, actually. The Sovereignty isn't a bad pickup. Sovereignty's really good always, but we've seen Clinton on their support player. They like going up his armor. It's really cheap, really effective, cost-effective defensive item here. And revolving around their tower play helps dive towers, buffs towers. So walking under towers, getting picks maybe early. And the, since it's a cheap item, they can uh, get more defense online really early in the game. So playing towards their strengths even more. As we see, the game has been paused. Is it paused? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was just frozen.
see the game unpaused here. See, the Horus is going solo here. Started off with wards. Trying to fend off these early ganks, maybe, on the Horus. Not very uh, strong level 1, level 2. You can easily die without having his 3. I'd say, especially early game Horus, he's going to be struggling to outclear the Osiris. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Thanatos blink either an AMC. It's definitely going to be the AMC right away. Yeah, we see the EMC going mid here. Thanatos with the tier 1 mace in the eye of the jungle, starting with a lot of power, looking to maybe come for a blink on this uh, AMC really early in the game and get a kill. I was going to say, they're, they're reading, reaching mid about 2 seconds before. Uh, Elkhorn has to be very, very careful here. And you see that AMC instantly runs on the tower. They get the wave pressure. If everyone gets a good poke on their jungler here, they're going to look to maybe grab these oracles left side play off their mid pressure and the poke on their uh, jungler here. And then if Duo isn't careful, hopefully Elkhorn is letting the team know that Thanatos is in left jungle. They have to be very, very careful here, and you see that they're backing up. So that's good communication from the Elkhorn boys. See him drop the vision shard there to make sure he doesn't come again, come again for the second time. See the Osiris getting poked out here. Horus with the blue stone going to the golden blade help clear is really early pressure here. From the looks, oh, almost got a kill on Solo. And then right now you're seeing the Tanner Soul getting mid pressure. They're gonna get the Lotus, and they're gonna get Interceptor before, and that's gonna be hefty goal change. To be careful here, though, Hanbas is hovering on the Solo side, looking to come up behind the Osiris here. He does have Blink. Let's see if he uses it. Osiris doesn't know he's coming here. This could be the first blood of the game. Coming to Elkhorn, and they kill Monk Lunker. Pickle with the first blood. That's 500 gold coming his way. He didn't even know it was coming. He just died to the Hunbats gank. Not too much he could do there, maybe. And like you said, Osiris, until he's level 5, doesn't have an escape, so he has to sit there and take whatever they're going to deal to him. See the underdogs here against Clayton getting the first blood. This could be what they need to come ahead. And, I mean... Against a, a strong team like Clinton, you gotta do... You gotta try some things. If you just play your game, Clinton will beat you straight up. He's ticked over two minutes. You're gonna see the second buffs coming spawning soon. Especially with Red, uh, would not be surprised if Fana, Fana and Soul, possibly even Kuzma might rotate for this Red. Uh, take the three v two. It's obviously a good fight for Conan. You always take the the man advantage fights. And his option go for the Red buff here. He's on Red buff. Doesn't look like they're coming for the invade this time. I oh. mean, they they do have a chance because Hunbats is on blue. If if they realize that. Then it takes red, they clear mid, run run to AMC's red, steal that. Seem to split the blue. So that's because of solo blue. It's gonna be pretty close next XP despite the kill here in solo lane. See Thanatos coming coming over left side here for the purple buff. And does it be doing? He got in there, he knocked a flinging way, and nothing too much to see there. He did force them off the void, and Hunbats is in the right jungle, so this is a free void if they want it. He drops the ward to cover him. Alice tries to steal, but I don't think it's going to be enough here. The pro buff's going to fall to Clinton. Looks like Humbats is, is going to go to X, back XP's for Clinton. That makes a lot of sense. You know the Thanatos is in left jungle. You know you're not going to get there, so you might as well steal any farm on that side of the map. So that, that's a good play out of deep pickle there. He opts to not take the second back camp, so he wants to back here, get his item in line. Want to really be, uh, really emphasize these mid camps so you can get three sets of mids after the spawn of Obelisk. The second mid on the Duo side will spawn twice if you kill it. And I'll also say, with that first blood, he's gonna get Yodin's finished, first item finished before anybody else in the game, so hopefully he can use that to his advantage and hopefully negate the early game potential from the Thanatos. See, Thanatos coming for the ult here, he's looking for the AMC maybe. Hovering above, lands on him under the tower, doesn't use anything, nothing too much there. He, I guess there he might have been hoping AMC might have got a, might have quicker burnt for his piece. and we get a kill from Jason Wick in the duo, he's in the Artemis assault. Artemis with the Kuzma there, teamed up, Artemis assault's really deadly if you're not careful there. Great job from Clinton, coming back, getting uh, back in the gold department, around the same gold as uh, Elkhorn here after that kill. See, it's even up right now. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm sorry Humbats hasn't really used... As soon as you hit level 5, you gotta be careful at Humbats. Humbats, base, he's, his entire kit revives around that ult. Fear No Evil is one of the best team fights ult in the game, 
and I I really would have liked to see him as soon as he's level five. He finished the Oceans, go on somebody blink alt high kill potentially. Against Clinton here, five minutes in, they don't have a substantial lead at all, which is unusual of them. So good job from Elkhorn here, staying in the game early. I, I would also say Thanos has no beads, he just has blink. So Hunbats, if he catches them off guard, especially with the AMC ult, I'm pretty sure he'll get burst down instantly. You see the pinks coming out from Clinton, they're coming on the red buff here. Hunbats is out position, drops Hunbats. the ult. And they killed Fable 1, like I said, if, if they hit that ult on Fable 1, he has no beads. Maybe pick up the Hunbats here. Not looking good for Clinton though. Kuzumo is definitely gonna die here. Not much here, but it was a, not a good invade. They're ready for it. They've obviously, when watching the Clinton games, know what they want to do here, and they had a good job defending, as we see. Humbaz blinks on the soul, maybe not too oh. much there, though. Unfortunately, he presses three and teleport back to the wave. So, no kill there. But at the same time, that was a really good play from Akhorn. Osiris ult forced out by Horus. He's gonna have to back. And. Teleport is up, so he won't lose too much. You see Elkhorn slowly thwarting the uh, Clinton early game here. Maybe throw him off their uh, balance here and get him in an uncomfortable spot where they're behind here. They're not behind too much in these uh, games as they're the Benitos best knows, team there. Knows Humbats is back. He won't get there in time. He oh, points up the wall and gets the scythe on him just before he backs. Great job on favor when the heads up play with the passive there, you can see him through the wall because he's low. I was gonna say, that had to have been under a second for he backed. He probably he probably had a shop open, was spam clicking, just waiting to back. Great job from Fable 1 there. See Artemis Kuzma just slowly getting the wave down by their side, getting these Gilded procs. The dual lane is really far behind on the Elkhorn side. Maybe maybe wait for them to back and maybe pull the gold for you here at the double ADC. Might be difficult though. Yeah, I would say... If it wasn't for, for Elkhorn's dual lane being so far down, Elkhorn would be up in gold in XP right now. That's that's the large the largest deficit in the game right now. So Kuzma grabbed the scepter there. It's a buff that follows him around. It can uh, help clear camps. Really helps on the slope support, doing some more damage there, helping out in that department. I'd also say it also helps if he wants to take a solo camp, solo his green, solo back XPs. Red's up, they doesn't I don't think Clinton's gonna get there time, they're just kinda contesting. They are getting active though, which is important here. Elkhorn's been on the defensive, so sooner or later Clinton should be getting a good play here and catch back up. Just did see the Kuzma go into the Emperor's armor like I suspected here. It's going two FizzD items, really useful into their double uh, FizzD, their double Fizz damage ADCs here. Uh, I, I was gonna say it. Honestly, if you're a tank in this situation for Clinton, you don't go any magic deep, because the only magical on the other team that's gonna do damage is that list. And he doesn't he doesn't bring a lot to the table in the damage aspect. Yeah, seeing that there is four physicals on the uh, Elkhorn side, it might not be uh, too weird to see uh, maybe all five members of Elkhorn building at least one defense item here to stop most of their damage, if not all, with their only magical being their support. See Thantos hovering here around the left side. Scoping things out, he's charging up the ult though. They're looking for a fight. Out. Two men ults, Soul AMC drops the beats. ult though. AMC beats two. Very narrowly escaped there, but good job from uh, Clinton making some plays in the map. Got him to back though. Looks like they might be grouping up his gold theory side. And and with the AMC beats on for the next 160 seconds, he has to abs he has to quiver. The moment he steps up, he's just dying. Knowing that the mid and jungle backed there, they easily pick up the gold the purple buff. I definitely say in, instead of taking mid tower, which mid tower, it's a nice tower to take rather than a side lane, but I would like to see him group up on gold. Put words do aside. If Xingwei or Alice come, just pick him. Simple as that. And yeah, knowing that the dueling's been playing pretty passive there and the other two back, it might have been a good opportunity to pull gold there, but seeing as this early in the game, they might not want to do it. You always run the risk of, of losing your lead, especially gold fury. It's, it's a risky endeavor always. See Kuzma covering left side here. Just getting some po capo coming out. Nothing too much to see here. See the aim scene the Hunbat's playing very far behind in their uh, on their tower. See well, how far behind they're playing, they might just want to ward up and maybe pull gold here because they're not really stepping up too much. I, I mean they kinda have to, especially with mid tower down, that 
That basically forces the AMC even farther back than those games. This is the jungle and mid ping down on the map. They know they're coming, but they have to be careful. The might blink ult. This is a 4v2 situation. Soul's kind of forced out by the Hunbat's AMC. It's going to be hard for Soul and Thana to get in the fight. You see Elkhorn getting active here. It actually looks like Clinton's getting split up. This could be really Soul's bad. jumped up by the Hunbats. He uses the to separate. AMC is dead. Oh, Fable misses the ult. Scythe on AMC, he's a goner. AMC's dead. I'm about to blink ult though. Might have to give a pickup kill on the Thanatos. So and Jingwei's dead. Jingwei getting a little bit too greedy on the ult there. Ult into the enemy team and dies. See, the other team is retreating here. Again, this might be a good time to pull gold here, seeing that the, everyone's backing or dead here. And both of Clinton's ADCs are still alive, plus their tank. The fight definitely could have gotten better for Clinton, especially if they don't hit stealth on AMC right away. And. But at the same time, you can't you can't say it was a terrible fight. They just, they just take the left tower. See so the two ADCs in the Kuzumo there working as we suspected with the Emperor's armor to help bring down these towers. We've seen that coming out from all their other games this year is they like taking towers. Again, grouping here, maybe playing a corner here, knowing that the enemy team uses all their ultimates and relics there. Not too much to be seen though. They're backing up here. And I would say realistically, once Thane hits level 12, I think. It's going to be very hard for Elkhorn to stay in. Because a lot of these fights, the problem is it's Thane ults, and it's immediately followed by D-Pickle, fear no eviling him. And then at that point, with no beads, he just he he's out of fight. He just dies instantly. So the Clinton side grabbed the Oracles. It gives vision on the Gold Fury Pit without having a ward, and they can't clear it. So maybe looking to group up around this Gold Fury now. You know, this might be the time to do it. I actually say invade red. Invade red, get a pick, and then pull gold. That, that's the play I would make. Seeing that they've acquired a, maybe a substantial lead, not that much though. I would even say if you need it, bring Osiris over, he's two levels up. If he loses a wave or two to Horus, that's not the end of the world. Yeah, see Thanatos back in gear. It actually looks Elkhorn's like- Elkhorn's grouping on gold figure here, they might pull it. Yeah, it looks like Elkhorn is pulling gold figure right now. Elkhorn's- mm, Oh no, they are not. It doesn't yeah. seem like they know that the- they're looking for a pick maybe before they pull it. See, so he... Arc Missile's coming out here. Tussie's doing massive damage here with all the stuns. Thanatos just comes in for the cleanup though. Fable one with a nice kill on the jungler here. Kuzma's pushing the AMC under the tower. Fable one might get the pickup on the AMC too. So Two time MVP making plays out here. Jingwei has zero HP. Gets a triple kill. Triple. Looking for the Quadra. This is the turn point that they needed. Gets the quadra kill! Oh, this is a perfect opportunity for Clint to pull the gold fury. This is a massive turnaround. And with that, they're gonna be about 7k gold out. Especially after this gold fury. Elkhorn with a promising lead early just slips away from them on a failed gank attempt, but great job from Clint recognizing that the gank was coming and getting a counter gank in. Picks with the gold fury, and now this is gonna be hard for Elkhorn to claw back into this game. The fed Thanatos is going to snowball with all that pennies building. This is going to be really difficult for Alcorn, but they do have a really good comp for scaling with the two uh, late game hunters. They might just look for picks in their tanks. Not out for Alcorn yet, but looking pretty doomed. I, I would say especially with the transcendent second item coming from the AMC, that's going to be hard to get his stacks up online. Most of the time if you're building a stack item like that, you're going to build it first. Or unless you're really, really at it. Picks up the Pyromancer there, helps him come back to base faster. That's what the Pyromancer buff does. Also, just gives him some golden XP here. Not much uh, Elkhorn could do there, but they just gotta try to split the map. Maybe coming on Dua's side, just so they try to force the tower, maybe, but be careful, they might pull the Fire Giant here. They just need to farm up and get late game. See, Pink's going on for the buffs here. The Dua side buffs the red and the purple buff. Clinton might be coming for an invade as they are. Hanbats is pretty low, so this should be pretty free for them with the lead that they've acquired. I'll also say, Atlas is level 9, he's, he's 3 levels down, Jingwei is 1 level See, down. See, Thanatos under the tower mid though. Gets the kill on the Hanbats to the ult. Nice shot from Fable 1 here. He's trapped though, this might not be worth it though. They get the shutdown kill on Fable 1, I'm pretty sure that it isn't really worth it here unless they can get some more cleanup. Kind of weird play by Kuzma going in there. Like, no real follow up on his team. Mm, out safely though, didn't have enough lockdown to kill him. Again, not too good because the shutdown bonus that they uh, get the kill on the Fable one. 
Helps him maybe claw back a little bit of a gold bump there. Yeah, and for those that don't know, when you get a shutdown bonus, you get extra gold and extra XP for killing them. So, like my co-commentator said, you sure you kill Hunbats, but the rest of his team is going to get a shutdown bonus. We see both the ADCs here going Kin's second item, really focusing on burning these tanks maybe. Kins did get a buff recently, making it pretty cheap to buy. They're getting into the later game phases, so we're going to see the uh, side lanes rotating maybe after they get a couple more items online, and so we're going to see the real team fights. And I mean, the, the one thing you always got to worry about is Thanados, his damage doesn't scale very well late game, so he, he'll almost transition into an alt bot, kind of just baiting the rest of the team out, almost. If you look on the left side here, you see all the player damage there. You see the blue bars dominating the group, the red bars here. Yeah. And a lot of that is is uh, Elkhorn's dual lane just being so far behind. They're kind of, they're just sitting back. They're just trying to get farm. Jingwei really isn't forcing a fight with his Artemis. Jingwei pressures the Artemis, but not too much to see there. We see four people right side, though. Looking for a kill. One best jumps away. I don't think he's going to get away, though. He blinks. He uses the blink to get away from Fable 1 here. He is running towards Clinton's side of the map, so... Thanatos is really fast with the two. He <laughs> wastes the ult there. Good pick from Clinton here. Not all the waters yet for Elkhorn. The horse flies away safely. And that's the situation. It's like when you have one HP. You don't press your beads, and you don't press your ult. You know you're not going to win. See, one situation. picked. Everyone's grouped on the right side here. They're calling the fire giant. They sh Unless a miracle happens for Elkhorn, this should be free. They have a really good zone with Kuzumbo here, you can ult off the enemies. Horus popped ult, he's gonna go in. He looks like he's going in with Atlas all comes in for the seal. This is uh, getting risky for them. They're all summoned by Artemis? Clint gets the fire giant, Fable 1 gets another kill. He... I was gonna say Ooh. that, that was almost really close with the Atlas salt, but just not enough damage. I don't know about the Kuzumbo not zoning there, made it closer than it had to be, but... Still gets the fire giant in the end. But it is showing that Elkhorn is having a uh, opportunity just to come back in this game without Clint is playing though. I mean, from now, they're realistically, Clinton just groups his five. Uh, they're going to take the towers down. Uh, I would group his five, take right, mid tower, and then take left, and he looks to take left Phoenix. So you almost always, the first Phoenix you want to take is left Phoenix because it's the farthest away from Fire Giant. When next Fire Giant spawns, somebody will have to back and stop Fire Wave from pushing into Titan Room. Okay. So as soon as that happens, it's a 4v5. You just force the fighter to take fire again. Not looking too good for Elkhorn here. Their Phoenix defense isn't that great with a lot of focus on one single target here, but D Pickle might have to come huge on this Humbat's ult though. Gripping left side here. Again, left side's the best place to go. Soul ult coming out. They might get a pick here. Nearly escapes though. Soul is just unable to catch up there. Looking to counter engage. We see two and right. They're looking to fight here, knowing that they have the man advantage. That's honestly a good play here. As long as Jingwei doesn't die. Kuzma might force out the. Kuzma forces the Jingwei's relics. But Jingwei still gets away. Great peel from the support on the Elkhorn side, though. Kuzma's in deep trouble here. Four people on him. He's really tanky, though. So curious. It looks like a little miscommunication between the Soul Artemis and Kuzma. But if I... look at right side here after the Kuzma pick, they're, they might pick up this right Phoenix. Everyone was focused on killing the Kuzumbo. It might have been a great play from the Kuzumbo, actually. Nice job getting a pickup from the Phoenix. They're flying in. They're using Horus Salt and Jingwei to chase. They're really thirsting. You're going to see Hunbat's ult, probably. Forces the blink out. Hunbat's ult on the Osiris. Mm, they pop the sprint to ch They don't pop the sprint to chase, though. Osiris might be out. They have really good chase, though, with the Horus here. And I missed the slide. Massive pull from the Atlas! Ooh. Pulls him back to the enemy team, forces the Fable 1's ult out! He's gonna have to ult just straight up. But watch out here! Go back in. They have to play to escape. Clean didn't pick up the Only Fury as we were watching this fight. Only Fury fell down and they're pushing up left lane. Again, might not be worth even for these kills. Unless is diving though. Great oh. turnaround! They have to kill us on this. He's got the juice she's on? They mm, kill him. They, they barely get the Osiris, but at what cost here? They lose. Right Phoenix and Oni Fury, and maybe this tier 2 tower just for two kills on tanks that took too long to kill here. I was gonna say, especially with the Soul's passive, she's 100% better than that tower. She might even get Phoenix, it doesn't look like Elkhorn's got back. They're not ready in time. Soul's great tower damage, they're passive here. Let's I clear the minions first. 
They did back. Oh, Not too many back. Oh, and somebody else backed. Pick up the speed buff. Jingwei does use the pets to fly in. Jingwei, when she leaves base, she can fly to about the tier 2 tower range. Great passive to come back into fights and help stop slow pushing. Planning is grouping and grouping left. Oh, we see a major pick. Deadbolt 10 gets a nice ult out on the Jingwei there. I was just being massive damage. From the Jingwei. Questionable decision from the Jingwei there. Again, commanding lead from Planning. Do you know evil? I don't know if there's much here though. They're really, really tanky. There's just there's just an XP and gold lead. It's, it's hard massive to ult from Fable One. This game's over here, boys. Triple kill from Fable One. Maybe looking for a second quadra. Not too close though. Unfortunately, can't get the fight away. See five people grouping on the Titan here. Clinton's gonna take game one against Elkhorn. Yeah, and gets the second quadra kill. That one isn't messing around. This is the back-to-back -back MVP here. Gets two quadra kills in Thanatos. Absolutely commanding no. lead. And they're looking to win the championship this year after falling just short against Random Lake last year. It's a great game by Clinton. Looking at the end of the game stats here, Thanatos absolutely demolished the Alcorn team. The 12 and 3 stat line it just was absolutely unstoppable once he got rolling. The quadruple and dual lane really set this game apart. And I was gonna say, honestly, D Pickle, I thought D Pickle played pretty well. A lot of those deaths were they were just so far behind. He was he was trying to jumpstart his team with Fear No Evil, but past certain point there was no follow up. Like that Phoenix fight. He ulted he ulted four people with Fear No Evil, but just no follow up. Can't do much there. Maybe seeing that the four physical might have been the downfall here. You see, it was really hard to kill when the uh, tanks in the Clinton side just all built physical defense because they had no magical damage really on the uh, Elkhorn side here. They were maybe playing around the uh, the uh, AMC ultimate and the Horus prot shred on his uh, stun, but it wasn't too wasn't too much for Clinton to handle as they easily get the win there after a bit of struggling in the early game though. I would I would even say that Atlas it looks like he was going into Void Stone, which re reduces magical protections. The if he built that, that's also kind of a waste on item slot. Yeah. Great game by Clinton, and they're going to move on after the semifinal match against Elkhorn. There's one more game. Yeah, there's I'll one move more. Move on to the next game against Elkhorn. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the semifinals, though.
I gotta get you in. Hold on. No, you're good. And we are live, and the first pick, D Pickle is picking up wait, the Agni. Wait, wait, where are bands? It looks like they set up the wrong game mode here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they set up, they, no bands coming out. Hopefully somebody notifies that there's no bands. But, I mean, they're honestly, at this point, they're kind of playing their hand. It looks like they're going to ban Agni to score to Cthulhu next game, so... A little bit of technical difficulties here, getting the wrong game mode. <laughs> We, well, I guess Clinton knows what they're looking to ban next game, so. Well, maybe, or they're playing around. I mean, I, I have seen Deadbolt whip out the Agni before, and Agni isn't a bad god right now, so. I think they just gotta wait it out, so. I don't think they were here. <laughs> just hit escape. Looks like they're just gonna wait it out here. <laughs> Maybe <bit> technical difficulties. <laughs> I think they're just. I hope they're just good. I hope Elkhorn didn't decide. This is the right game of this time, not the wrong one. As you see, do you see the Agni coming out? And then that's going to be followed by Cthulhu and Discordia if they follow the exact same game plan. But if you're Elkhorn, you have to ban the uh, Thanatos away here. He was absolutely dominant on it. There's nothing they could do after he got a rolling. So either but, looking, probably looking for a banner, they do have topics. So they might want to pick it away from him. But the question is, is would you rather play into Cleo is or Thanatos? You do see the Thanatos coming out, but again, Fable 1 is pretty good on the clean and he does play it a lot, so... Maybe probably the next band coming out. Because you do see the same bands from Clinton, the Cthulhu, Daji, probably the Poseidon following. If they don't ban the Kleena, they might look at to pick it here, as they do pick it up. And that's a good pickup, stealing one of Fable One's classic mm. odds. Kleena really good right now, really good at flexing in the jungle and solo. Pretty dominant in both roles and really hard to deal with the way she can play inside of walls. As we do see the Baka Sura coming out. Good pick against Kleena, can outfarm her early, he has a cripple to stop her from hiding in walls when she gets low, and all of her damage comes from her dash pretty much here. See the Cyrus picked again from Mug Munker, pretty comfortable pick for him I guess. Looked pretty decent on it, didn't really die too much, just played a Cyrus last game, so looking mm. to repeat that. And the Bolona ban is actually biting Elkhorn right now. It, Bolona if you three Voxer or Osiris, they basically just don't get to play the game. Scourge disarms, so you can't auto attack for three seconds. So, kind of a bad ban there. Looking to hover the Pele, not a two pop over God right now, but does have the early game pressure. If this locks in, it's probably going to be the Kleena solo here. Seeing Kleena is pretty much dominant in the solo lane, probably more, as a, more of a solo laner than a jungler, honestly, but it works either side. So, the Pele picked alongside, so. I was going to say, even in casuals on ranked, you don't see Pele a lot, so that's an interesting pick. Maybe you wanted to hold the uh, jungle pick there from the Pele, so they don't know where it's going or what god is going where, maybe. So now they know that they have the solo and jungler locked in, so they don't have to waste bands. But yeah, I was going to say, especially because you, you know Clinton wasn't going to pick it, and they 100% were not going to ban Pele. Unless they knew something about Elkhorn and their play style. 
see if they do go for the more AA focus to comp again. Maybe the double AC coming up from Clinton again. It worked really well, but they do pick the soul away from Deadbolt 10 here. Deadbolt was pretty good on the soul, helped play to their advantages of taking towers, taking objectives. So picking away is a pretty big uh, deal for Elkhorn here. Is this going to be a John Quay pick? Maybe. The John Quay isn't banned, and uh, Deadbolt 10 does like the John Quay. He does pick the Zeus, though. Mm. Zeus is a lot of damage, but he's really, really unsafe, though. It'd be interesting how he places those into two assassins diving him. I'd also say it'd be interesting to see how he builds if he goes the the full defense Zeus build where you still do a, a ton of damage just off his base kit. Not seeing too much of a theme from both teams here. Maybe Cyrus Boxer just gang up on the Kalina in the jungle, try to force her behind, get the Boxer ahead with a golden blade, helps him farm really well doing extra damage camps. See the Atlas banned from Clinton's side. Waiting on the Elkhorn side's ban here. I'd actually like to see an RDO, RDO support coming out from Elkhorn. I know it's kind of weak early game, but just sit on the boxer with the two cripple and he can't get away and realistically he's just going to die. They, they ban out the Iznami and the Athena coming out. Medusa coming out. Rapid fire bans, looking to focus on the ADC, but Artemis is still open and he looked pretty good on it, getting early kills with the ultimate there. So maybe looking for the Artemis. Picks the Apollo though. <laughs> Paul's ultimate, if you don't know, helps him fly in a chariot and you can fly around the map and come down with big damage and a knockup. So, getting that global pressure alongside the boxer who can rotate really fast from his passive, giving him extra movement speed. The horse picked again from the uh, Elkhorn side here. Probably going solo again. Didn't really look too good last game, but didn't really play in the game that much. They kind of fell behind before he got a chance to rotate. So, looking to redeem himself on the horse pick here. Scordia hovers. So it is going to be a soul ADC here. Sklina, Solo, Horus. A oh, Kabraken. Kabraken's hovered from the Clinton side. Uh, let's see if they go the Cheese Kabraken start. I, I'm a big supporter of the Cheese Kabraken start in rank. That almost always works. You almost guarantee to get a double kill in duo. So we'll, we'll see if he goes the curse. If. If he, he runs through the jungle, starts tremoring the wave, you you pop your one, or no, you curse them, they beat, they have to beads that, otherwise they die, and then you hit them with the one, and then they're stunned, and you, you can't escape that, especially especially level one soul. The Bracken pick really does tie this team up together, helps with a lot of the peel issues that they're lacking on their team. Bracken also does a lot of damage, really tanky, and... Maybe play around his ult here. Ults can block off Pele ult and Discordia ult from hitting his team, so maybe if he gets a little bit wacky there on his ultimate, he can uh, even support in that sense. I, I was going to say, Clinton won an extremely dive-heavy comp. They can easily just jump. They can jump Discordia. They can jump Pele. They can jump Cleo if they really need to. It's going to be hard for the squishies of Elkhorn for this game. Clinton's draft is looking really good into the Elkhorn draft here. They did get the clean on Elkhorn's side. is a big plus, but... I'm kind of favoring leading towards this Clinton draft here. A lot of counter picks, a lot of uh, pretty meta gods here with the Zeus Kabrakan. It's going to be hard to fight into that as uh, Elkhorn. And you can never disrespect the Apollo. That ult, like him, you can just hover and and stop the other team from taking Fire Giant, Gold Fury, or any objectives, really. So you did see last game, though, the uh, Elkhorn did have a good job fending off of the invades. Apollo is really going to be a good pick here to... Make sure they do get the invades off, get their snowball rolling early like they always do in their regular season games that they did all year. So Paul's going to help get that pressure, rotate out of lane fast, and come to the buffs to invade. And it, and especially in, on Elkhorn's side, you won't see the same problem where it's four physicals. So the Kabraken and the Osiris, they won't just be, oh, I'm just going to build physical defense. What are you going to do to me? They're going to have to split it in between physical prots and magical prots this game. Yeah, good job uh, adapting from Elkhorn's side. Got the Thantos away from Fable 1 as comfort picks here, so clean up versus uh, Fable 1 on a Nana God that he's too comfortable with, if I know. Likes the Thantos a lot, but doesn't really play Boxer too much, so clean up versus Boxer is going to be an interesting matchup to watch during this game.
and we are back. Everybody's loaded the game. Uh, like I said, I really, really want to see the Kabrak and Cheese curse, but it doesn't look like we're going to get it. And I mean, what better time to whip out a cheese strat that you know is going to work and the other team won't expect than the semifinals or finals, so. Do you see uh, the Clint size giraffe is again very auto attack heavy, so maybe a shell coming out here would be great. Maybe two shells from Clint, maybe their mid laner doesn't opt to get into the Aegis, maybe goes for a shell to help stop this damage coming up from all their auto attacks. Could be an opportunity to get back in the game if they're down, maybe turn a fight with a couple of shells, so. See both sides in a normal start. I'm looking for an enemy to come out, but don't think they're going to be coming up that far. Just going to back up, drop the ward down, and get ready to set this game. And nothing, nothing too weird on the bill end. That looks pretty standard. Do you see the Quebec opting into the Meditation Cloak? Not too popular of an item now, but... I would also say with Kraken, I don't, like I said, with the Curse, I'm a big fan of the cheese. But at the same time, a lot of Kraken players like to get the blink, blink stun into a initiate, and you just blow them up instantly. Who is it? It is a Pele solo thing, not the Kena so interesting. Or is it? Yeah. 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 See the Pele with an interesting start. He hogged the minis before coming to the blue buff, so he's gonna have a he's gonna hit two faster and look for an early kill. Cyrus does seem to know what's happening, doesn't back or backs up to make sure he doesn't die to this early game Pele. I'd also say Cleo is stealing the XP's on right side, but they are giving up all and complete mid pressure to the box of Zeus. They really want to focus on the solo side, looking just how early in this game they're looking to the solo side of this map, trying to kill us Osiris again, like they did last game to get that lead. Worked out from last game, let's see how it works this game. Back in Tremors the wave, forced to back up on the inside. Still see two people grouping solo. The link. Osiris is looking pretty weak here. Gets under the tower though, not too much to see there. Nice job from the Cyrus to not die from the gank, and um, that's the blink down. Pelly's pretty poked, so great job from Monk Bunker there. They do get all his pots up. He might have to back soon. So a little bit of poking back and forth and do a side. Not too much to see, or maybe. They do get the clear here. Looking for a pick here. Sun, they great the stun. There might be a double kill here. It works out in the end, taking the soul away from double 10. Gets a great job getting the first blood. Again, seeing just like how it was last game, they get the first blood there. And especially on carry, when you're 1v1ing, you're boxing each other, that 500 gold is a big difference in one item. So that's really going to help out the soul. You see the top of your screen, it says Clint on the left side, but uh, they're actually on the red side. So don't worry about that. We're going to change that right now. <laughs> that's a good call. <laughs> A wee bit of uh, attack move is there, but <laughs> still looking good. And we're back, and it is fixed. That's pretty good. Good, good catch there. Yeah. Looking just how like last game went. Early kill on a side lane, get that early game pressure. Correcting walking up here, not too much to see though. See Clinton just grabbing their buffs, make sure they get their own farm before they get too fancy on the invades here. We have seen this interesting plays by this clean out sticking by this Pele side the entire game here. It's almost like they really don't have a full jungle, it's almost like they're running 2-1-2. Rotating mid here, this could be scary for the Zeus here if he's in lane. I mean, they they know they can see the Pele and Cleo coming. They're all coming for the Zeus. This is this looking is an interesting group up at level four. Forces the jump up for favorite one. Boxer. Three people on him. Four people on him. Actually, this is gonna be the fall favorite one here, unless something near Five people. Five man rotate <laughs> on the Boxera. They really don't want him getting ahead. Yeah, interesting strat. I don't know if it's worth it too much for rotating five people, but I guess they did kill their best player last game, so I guess that works. 
That that is extremely rare. Very rarely you'll <laughs> Oh actually... great job from the Jason Wick here dashing out of the horse stun. Might have been dead meat right there if that horse stun connected, but nice job. I was gonna say, from Fable One's perspective, how how often does that really happen? How often do you just expect to see five people on the show? Again, very reminiscent of the last game. Really kills on the Elkhorn side. Blinks from Fable 1 on the tower. Uses the ultimate to finish off the Discordia. Nothing you can do there. Great job from uh, Fable 1 recognizing that the Discordia is a weep out of position. Uses the ultimate to get the cleanup kill. Honestly, their Discordia probably was like, you know, 200 more gold. I can stay in lane. I gotta get my my Spear Magus, Divine Rune, whatever she's gonna go. So. Because we still see the cleanup playing a solo side. I don't know why he's playing solo as too much as uh, last game of solo and didn't really make the difference of the game, but I think it's more he just doesn't want to deal with the pilot back. At the same time, he doesn't want to really play in the favor. Again, world. they're rotating the mid lane. He uses the blink to catch up. Double they, 10 they is he uses the wall to chase they and the blink. Down. Zeus is ulting to peel, but he's dead again. Oh, he comes in for the cleanup though. Happen, Maybe he's getting really damaged. Oh, he kills him too. This is surprisingly and working. They steal the speed. The strat of rotating meta, two people is working somehow. The catching Clinton off off guard here. I've never seen this even <laughs> remotely work, but I, I mean, guess it's a great change up from last game. I have seen it work once, but it was it was when this this uh, new map was first introduced against two pro players in PTS. It was not a fun time. But other than that, you very rarely see this everywhere. They really are trying everything they can to inch out a win against Clinton here after that, f that de first defeat. This is going to be extra scared now, knowing that he's, they're rotating to mid really often. They're going to want to set up wars over there to make sure they can catch him before they can die. Dive the Zeus at his <laughs> a tier Pops 2. Pops they're gonna Looking go for a fight here. One Clicker and Fable 1 are going to gang up on this party. Great stun from the Cyrus' Tether and an easy pickup from Fable 1. Despite getting uh, rotated on a lot and uh, getting absolutely demolished at his back, uh, between his towers there and at the start of the game, Fable 1 is going to a nice job farming here. As they barely get away, Jason Rick escapes on the Apollo using that movement speed from his dash to get out. Clean is looking to go to the wall to catch the Apollo though. He might have, he has to be careful here. Paul is playing smart is out, and though. going all the way back to his tier 2. I think so. he's getting damaged in the wall, but no one's there to punish that, so looking good from uh, looking good from Elkhorn here. It looks like Elkhorn's on uh, the red side here and Clint's on the blue side, but it's not. The way Elkhorn's playing, they're really uh, Elkhorn, taking the commanding lead. Like Elkhorn's actually pulling gold right now. They're on the gold theory. Now they're, mm, they they're looking for maybe to bait one in. They see the Zeus. Clean it dashes on him. Zeus is out of Double 10 has to be careful. The Scorpio comes in, but he barely picks up the kill. He has to be careful though. He still dies here, I think. Oh, no, oh! Power ult! Jason Wick at the great ultimate rotations! Really turned on really turned on Elkhorn there. I don't know if that was, wasn't really the play there. The Apollo ult, you have to be very careful of it. I mean, if the Discordia hits land, Zeus does die there. So, but at the same time, it's gonna be a 1 2 trade. So. A great job getting active from Elkhorn, but they barely couldn't put off is the great rotation from Jason Wick there on the Apollo. Really paying off on the Apollo pick. As you see the gold swinging in Clinton's favor after that misplay there. This is not what he wanted if you're Elkhorn. Again, throwing away the, uh, not massive, but pretty decent lead out of the early game. Doesn't ha doesn't, uh, feel good to them. So the fighting over the coup there. Gives your team mana and a little bit of gold. Got the coup for the crew. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you see the cleanup playing this right side. We've seen this time and time again this game. Comes up the right side by the bluff and then rotates behind the mid laner here to see what happens again. Boxer knows he's right there. Boxer sniffs it out here. Used to be able to catch the clean out. Maybe miss it a little bit, but his team's there to clean up. Great job from Panzer. Cutting off the, the any escape plan. Adapting to their play, they've done it. They've done it twice, but this time they're ready for the ready to pick up the clean out there. Great job. See that? See the boxer pick really coming in clutch with the cripple. Like we said at the uh, picks and bands there, the cripple helps lock down the clean up. Make sure she can't get in the wall or dash away. So great job from Clinton there. Honestly, I feel like we're we're kind of watching the same game. Elkhorn starts really strong, kind of playing a little jank, but they're still getting the, the, the picks, the kills, and then Clinton they just adapt to the strategy and look like they're gonna pull away with it again. 
and really focus on Fable in this game after his major performance and his back five MVPs here. Looking at the box there already, but the kind of a quiet hero of this game is in the last game is Jason Wick here. Did a great job on the uh, Artemis there early game, last game. Just getting that tiny lead, not falling behind, and just playing, doing his job really well. So looking good on the Apollo, see if he can keep it up here too. And I will say, especially with the, the Cleo and Paley splitting almost everything, they're going to be lower level than they have Cyrus and Boxer who are soloing anything. Again, they're grouping up two people. It didn't work last time, but they don't sift it out. Zeus is on left. They maybe know he's there. Discord is kind of poked. Looking left side, they have to be careful here. Apollo takes left tower. Dropping wards in gold fury. Apollo did drop the tower though. They might look at the Apollo here. Apollo's ulting. Apollo's ult make knows recognize that the oh great kill from Fable One. Didn't do to see that one, but Fable One picks up the uh, the Scordia lacking behind on the rotation there. Caught her out on the rotation between mid and the gold fury side. At this point, they can take mid tower. They're Run it red, and we're full gold, but it looks like they're just going to play safe. The tower is crumbling like Elkhorn's hopes this game. Clinton is right jungle, looking to... They're, this is going to be massive here. This might be the turning point for Elkhorn here. They're ready to fight. Don't have their bit of mid laner, but Clinton, Clinton recognizes, recognizes they got the lead. They're backing up. They do have all five volts on the side of Elkhorn. Yeah. Helping around to make sure they don't do the Pyromancer, but... They want to take their uh, take their riches and leave. Get the good kill, good tower. Just back up, get your farm. I'm wasting time just hovering here too. Again, splitting. See the Kleena is not even doing too bad, but he's just down from a splitting here. It worked out early game, but maybe they want to stop it. You see the Scordia often going with Divine Ruin. Not too much healing, but they really want to negate this uh, Boxer's healing. When he dives and eats the minions there, he can heal, so... But at what point is too much focusing? Because if you're if you're five sending five ults, you're hyper focusing Boxer, you're basically just giving everybody else on Clinton's team free reign. So at what, at what point is too much? And I, I think right now it's a little too much. We do see the player damage chart though. Soul is topping it pretty significantly, so Soul might be looking to just play safe, have the team play on the Soul here, because she's the one that's going to be making a lot of the majority of the plays here. But at the same time, Jason Wick, through excellent farming and excellent rotations, is still up. Yeah, if you see the XP levels. difference here, the XP difference is major here. The security all the used to escape. They did fill this security out, so they're going to pull the gold through here. Bait him into the fight, maybe? Backing up, just gonna dance a bit. I I think they kind of want to play it safe. Jason Wick is at half health. He's gonna get some life steal back. Comes for the flank there. Great job on the stun. Zeus also dropped. Fable one gets the kill. Doctor Pekin gets the pickup kill though. Boxer and Jason Wick Boxer gets another kill, double kill from Fable one. Kind of split up here. Fable one might be in danger. Merrily gets out. Quick wrecking more over the wall. Horse pops the ult. Horse ult to chase up. though. This is getting dicey for Clinton though. He hits Fable. He ults. Fable 1 is in danger. Fable Fable great down. job. And Kraken's the, dead. This is what they needed. A great turning point. They just give up on Zeus. Pull gold. Zeus looking to return some damage. Great job. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Deadbolt 10 with the massive damage there. That really, really sucks. For the Elkhorn side, they're maybe looking to pull Glow Fury, but gets massive damage and a kill, so great job from Deadbolt 10 there. But that's what I mean when you pull away. They're, they're really slightly not going to kill full health Zeus under tower. Yeah, if they just backed up there after the dive, they did a great job, but... Maybe maybe if you pull and he comes up to, to gold, you can pick him off, but... He just had the perfect positioning to deal damage and not die there, so... It was, that was an interesting fight, but good on Elkhorn for that. Mainly way that way. You can see this goal difference. A little bit of a jump there after Elkhorn is making some big plays, but comes right back down after Double Sound with a major kill there. Not too much that, uh. Not too much Elkhorn could have done except for his backup, maybe, but. They I mean, did a great job of getting some kills. Great team fighting against Clinton. It's a really good team fight team, so that's a good sign for Elkhorn, knowing that they, even when they're behind, they can still get a barely, barely not get away from a good team fight. I would even say in Elkhorn's book, that's a win. It's it basically resets the game, it stops Clinton from getting that gold free, and now it's time to just chill back and farm again. 
little bit dicey. Pelly's gonna escape though, using the movement speed from the uh, third ability there. It's gonna back up, get some farm. And I would not be surprised if Paulo, after coming away, if he pushes the, he's gonna get XP's. He's gonna look to rotate. Maybe if they're clearing words on gold, it looks like they're gonna pull it. And the gold fear is being pulled. They have some really good peel. Alcorn has to give this up. Paley's all the way in right. Paley's not there. If they're looking for it, they have to steal and get out. Getting pretty low though. Zeus comes in, damages it. They're looking for the fight. Kabrakanoth's gonna come out here. Zeus all dropped. Ooh. Double 10 is literally doing so much damage here. Force is gonna fall. Double 10 gets the kill. Souls forced out. They're gonna, they get the gold fear and the kill. They're gonna counter engage though. Blinks in and picks up a kill. Dr. Prickle picks up a kill but dies to the double 10. Double 10 is doing so well this game with Zeus. Soul very easily could have stole that gold fury. It, a little misplay by Clinton as the person who was tanking and started running towards the the team of Elkhorn pulled it super close where Soul could have just easily hit all charges with the ultimate Soul. See Elkhorn protecting that gold fury. They die now they give up Pyromancer. They should have just realized that they weren't going to get the gold fury and go to Pyromancer and just take the little bit of a de deficit from the gold fury giving more gold than the Pyromancer, but it's still something. But now they walk away with nothing and they just died. So you see the player damage, Zeus is pumping so much damage on the Zeus pick. And he is going full damage, so the, the dive comp of the Pele and Cleo really hasn't been able to get to him past early game. Zeus is really mobile, but he does a great job of blowing up dive, but that's on top of him, and we're seeing that on full display here. The Zeus is really just demolishing this dive here. It doesn't look like they have an answer. They have to maybe just bait out abilities and play through the walls of cleanup, but it's going to be really hard. Just grabbing red buff. See three people grouping on mid again, maybe looking for something, but Kalina's just hovering right jungle here. Queen with his lead is just gonna look to farm up and play around then maybe just pushing a tower. Kind of weird here, not too early to pull a fire giant, but again, Apollo can just sit in left lane all he wants because that all can help him rotate here, so. It yeah, it's gonna be hard for Soul to, to play around this. Despite being the main damage dealer in Alcorn. Basically, has to be in left lane to stop from taking tower, possibly Phoenix, and ulting over for Fire Giant. Well, it does look like Buckster is hoping to catch an overzealous soul, but soul backs under tower and Buckster leaves. Elkhorn has to play really passively here. There's not much they can do, nothing to really take. If I was Elkhorn, just try to play corner 5 5 and get a pick, but it might be too risky for how far they're down. I was say, even if you play a corner on Zeus, he'll just beads and throw his entire kit down and you're dead. See three people green left side. Mm, coming back to mid side. They're just hoving around looking for a little bit of an extension from Alcorn, but it doesn't look like they're gonna give it to him here. I guess the one thing is Pele is split pushing, getting getting the waves coming back. Clint does call the push left tower, and for some reason help him take it again. They no one's there to contest. Pele has back, Pele has back. They get a free Phoenix there. Pele isn't backing. Pele and 4v5. 45 and they're up on the fight here. Clinton might be a pretty easy Phoenix. Not much I can do there. Discardia ult comes out though. One burger, great stun! Great job from Dr. Fable to pick up one. This is the they got the Phoenix, but at what cost? Double 10 again getting a kill on the, the return here. I Not much here. Got away there. Reckon's really low. Double 10 is doing so much damage to the source. They blink in the play, blinks in! Pele gets the kill on Panzer! Again, diving the back line here. Slow, Osiris, a little bit split. Great job. Double 10 again getting clean up kill. Ooh. Double 10 is doing so much here. Gets the kill. This might be the game. See, Only horse is alive. This is going to be game over. See, that, that that was a good fight on Elkhorn, but at the same time, I wouldn't have taken that. Everybody was a little... Everybody was coming in one on one. It wasn't a consistent team fight from uh, Elkhorn against Clint. Maybe not game over. They did spawn, but... Very, very bad for Elkhorn there. Got the Phoenix down, got a massive lead. And that player damage chart is insane. Look at the Zeus, man. I, I mean, what is that? Devil 10 is game. going sicko mode. Devil, de de <laughs> de Devil 10 is going hard in the paint. But they did everything they did to shut down the Fable one after the monster performance last game, but they did not count for the Devil 10 here on the Zeus pick. He is doing so much in these fights, getting so many return kills, not dying to the die, which is a really important part. And, I mean, whenever you see Zeus, when you press T, which pops up all the stats in-game, you always want to see Zeus top kills, top damage, top gold. And he's doing a great job on the top damage. 
and the top kills. Okay, grouping right side here. Fire Giant is n didn't be taken. They just pushed the left Phoenix dry with no Fire Giant, so it's going to be really hard. With Harfar, but they're behind. I would recommend they just split push left here, just give up the fire and try to play defense because they did a good job on the defense, but they barely just lost Phoenix and Devil Ten was going crazy. So I would also say this is not enhanced if er, enhanced fire giant, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, 30 minutes the fire giant gets enhanced and it's really really hard to defend against an enhanced fire giant. So if our Elkhorn just give us up, split the map, farm up, and be ready for this team fight on the Phoenixes. I'm surprised they're going for tower first, really. Maybe just looking for overcension here, but they're giving Elkhorn a way into fight. Uses his scurdy ult, gets some good poke on the, get some good poke there with his scurdy ult. But I don't know, that wasn't really that useful there. They're just gonna back up, regen here. Slipped up mid, kind of hovering here. If I were them, I'd just back up and force fight and fire, but. Both junglers are just chilling. You see Kalina's got a flank on left side. This might be really dangerous for them. Kalina's coming from behind. They're gonna pinch him. Massive ultimates coming out. This Devil 10's ult is going sick of mode. Once again, Fable 1 gets to pick up. Devil 10 gets to pick up on them. Fable 1 gets a double kill. This isn't looking good for Alcorn. Triple kill Fable 1. Dr. Pickle gets a kill on Jason Wick, but it's at what Damn. cost? Fable 1 with another quadra kill. Three quadra kills in this set. Absolutely dominant performance. They're just gonna push on left. No Phoenix. That is game over. And you hear some cheering. Would not be surprised if that's from the boys from Clinton. Clinton doing a great job in that team fight. Absolutely dominant performance. Getting a little rocky in their game, but showing that's why they're the number one team here. And with this win, they are still undefeated. Going on to the finals against the winner of the next game, Case and Tom, which would be Case and Tom Walk. Great job from Clinton there. Getting the 2-0 victory over Alcorn. Some moments of, uh, honestly, surprise from Alcorn. Doing a great job staying in the game for pretty long until they just got in line to clean the superior team fight team. But Alcorn did stand a chance, but great job with Devil 10 carrying the game. Fable 1 doing as much as he could while getting camped. Great job all around from Clinton there.